Hello, in this lecture we're going to continue on with the master budget. We started the master budget last time, so if you haven't seen the first part of this, you might want to look at that first and then move on to the second piece of it. The second piece here is including direct labor, factory over, selling, general and administrative parts of the master budget. We will be able to list the components of the master budget, create direct labor budget, create factory overhead budget, create the selling expense budget, and create the general and administrative budget. All right, so let's go through the process first. We won't go in detail of here, but we do want to keep in mind the fact that all these budgets are going to tie together, and we're going to do it in this order in order to get to our master financial statements budgets of the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow budget. So we're going to start off with the sales budget. Then we need to do the production budget in order to get the units that we need to produce. Then once we have that, we can figure out the, how much the direct materials we'll need, how much direct labor we'll need, how much overhead we'll need. We can also have the capital expenditure budget at this point, as well as the selling and administrative budget. Then we can have the total cash budget that we will need, and then we can create the balance sheet and the budgeted income statement and the budgeted statement of cash flows. This is the order we need to go through in order to uh, have everything flow in the proper format because many of these steps need to happen prior to another thing happening. So here we go forward. Now remember that last time we talked, we already did the sales budget. So we did that last time. Here's just a recap of what it looked like. We used that sales budget in order to create the production budget, how much units we're going to produce, we needed to produce. And then we used that for step three to have the raw materials budget. That's where we left off last time. Now we're moving forward this time. We'll move forward to the direct labor budget. So note we're jumping back to part two here. I'm going to use the production budget to help with part four, which is the direct labor budget. That's the order that we're doing this in. So we have the units that we're going to produce. These are how many units we're going to produce. If we're, talking, we're looking at like guitars, if this how many guitars we need to produce. We're then going to think about how much labor will we need in order to produce that then. Okay, well in July, we're going to say the budgeted production. We're going to have the production is just being pulled down for this calculation. So there it is for July. There it is for August coming straight down. And there it is for September. So that's how these two budgets are related. The production budget, how much we're going to produce, and the direct labor budget, uh, how much hours are we going to have to need and how much money we're going to have to spend for the labor. We're going to take that. We're going to take that multiply times the labor required per unit. Now, we're going to say it takes a half an hour, half, you know, 0.5 hours. We usually think about labor when we think about paying people hourly, obviously. But when we start to measure things, it could get very precise. You might see something broken out, of course, in terms of minutes. How many minutes does it take to uh, get something done? And just be aware that you'll need a conversion if that happens because there's 60 minutes and the conversion can be a little bit tricky. So you just got to make sure that when you're thinking about uh, the units of time, the conversion between minutes to hours here, we're just saying it takes half an hour. I'm not putting 30 minutes. We're putting half an hour. And that, of course, lines up nicely to when we have to multiply times the hourly rate. That's what we're going to need. So you also may be thinking, well, what if we pay someone's salary and this type of thing? We're thinking about hourly wages in this case when we're thinking about producing the item. If people get paid differently, we might have to have some kind of estimate in order to do a calculation like this. We're going to need some estimates in the budget in order to figure this out. This is the type of area where you can probably picture someone with a stopwatch trying to figure out how long it takes to do a particular process and trying to figure these things out and refine our estimate down, but it will need to be some type of estimate. All right, so then we're going to say that the total hours needed then is going to be the, in this case, the 19,586 times the 0.5 half an hour is the 9,793 hours. The 20,000 times 0.5 is the 10. The 25 times the 0.5 is the 10 to uh, 50. That's how many hours we are projecting out. We will then have the hourly rate, which we're saying is $14 an hour. Again, some people might make more, some people might make less. We could get into a very complicated projection on how many, you know, how much uh, hours it would be in different pay levels, but we need some estimate, and this would be a, the type of estimate that we would have then. And then, of course, if we multiply that out, if we have the hours times uh, the rate per hour, then we can get the dollar amount. So we got the hours times the rate per hour, we get the dollar amount, the hours times the rate, the dollar amount. This would be the total that we're going to spend in dollars. Again, make sure that if you see something that's in minutes, 
make sure that you make that conversion to hours uh, in order to multiply it then times what's probably going to be the hourly rate is how it's getting. We don't usually think about the minute rate in terms of pay, so be careful on that. Now we're going to take the uh, direct labor budget and help us to create the factory overhead budget, or we're going to create the factory overhead budget. Now when we think about factory overhead budget, the thing that we need to keep in mind is the fact that usually there's two components to factory overhead. We have some costs that are going to be variable and some that are fixed. We may have some mixed costs even, but we need to break out those two. We need to figure out how are we going to break these things out, how are we going to deal with the variable portion, the fixed portion. Very, I mean, the fixed portion is usually pretty easy because that's just going to be the same. We can like take last year's numbers usually and just you know project them forward. They're not going to change. They're fixed, kind of like the rent. Variable will change in some way. In this example, to reflect this in this example, we're going to take the direct labor hours, which are being pulled down from the direct labor budget here. Direct labor hours, direct labor budget. We're going to multiply that times the variable factory overhead rate. So that's going to be, uh, in this case, 2.6. So that's going to be the givens for this particular problem. Again, in real life, we'd have to be, I mean, in a book problem, we'd have to be given this type of information to calculate the variable portion in some way. In real life, we would have to figure out some kind of estimate to accurately figure out what the best estimate would be for the variable portion. This is what we're using here. That gives us the budgeted variable uh, overhead. So the budgeted variable overhead, the 9793 times 2.6 gives us the 25 for uh, 61, the 10,000 times 2.6 gives us the 26,000, and so on. And then we come up with the fixed portion. Fixed portion is pretty straightforward. It's pretty easy. It's kind of like the rent. You would just say, well, we know what the rent is. It's going to be the same going forward. It's always the same. So when we think about the fixed cost, we can think about what we traditionally often think about when we think about a budget, and that's just, well, what was it last year? It's going to be the same <laughs> next year. That's not the case for everything we've seen, but that's that is the case for many pieces and the fixed portion piece is usually in that type of area so then the total then would be the variable portion plus the fixed portion for example the 25 461 plus the 21 gives us the 46 461 the 26,000 plus the 21,000 gives us the 47,000 and so on and so forth until we have the total in terms of the overhead for dollars of the 141,111. all right now we're going to look at the selling expense budget. We have the same kind of thing when we think about the selling. When we think about uh, production of inventory, someone that a company that produces inventory, we usually think about the selling and administrative are often the period costs, and they're often like overhead in that they have the fixed portion. The fixed portion is going to be easy because the fixed portion is fixed. When we think about the selling costs, we might think about uh, salespeople's salary or the or the cost of the store that we sell. In terms of rent or in terms of depreciation those things are usually fixed pretty straightforward we may have the variable portion however for example we could have the budgeted sales times the sales commission so if we pay commission that is something that's basically variable in nature and we'll have to figure out well okay well that's going to change that's not going to be something that's going to be straightforward we're going to need the sales number then if and if all sales are going to be commission sales then we can take total sales and multiply times the commission. If only portion of the sales are commission sales, we're going to, have to figure out what that portion will be, multiply times the commission. And if we did that, then we're going to take the sales, 494, 400 times 9% is the 44,496, and so on and so forth for July, August, and September. Then we're going to have the fixed portion. So we have the fixed salaried individuals. Theirs is pretty straightforward. We know it, it's, you know, we're going to take their yearly salary and divide it by 12. <laughs> and we'll get the yearly. So the fixed portion is easy. If we add those two up, we get the totals. For example, the 44,496 plus the 3,500 gives us the 47,996. The 42,326 plus the 3,005 gives us the 45,836 and so on. Then we have the general administrative area. Again, usually fairly straightforward. We're talking about the office in this case. And the office usually have salaried uh, people working there, including the accountants who usually get paid salary. So that's going to be pretty much the same. It's a fixed cost going forward. The, the rent on the office or the depreciation on the office, usually these are fixed things. Usually this is a pretty easier portion of the budget because it doesn't vary in terms of changes with production. So in this case, we're just going to say that the salaries is salaries. So they're fixed. In this case, 11000 per month. We just take the total salary divided by 12. That's what people are going to get paid. We do have to watch out, of course, for increases and fluctuations in salaries, but pretty straightforward. Then we have the interest. We're going to include interest in this case. In this case, we have a loan out, 
and we are currently paying apparently uh, 5,000 of interest. This interest rates are usually pretty fixed as well. So as long as if the if the interest, I mean, if the loan amount doesn't vary, like if we're paying, we're not paying off principal, then the interest should be fairly constant on that as well. If we're paying off principal, then we just look at the amortization table and figure out what it's going to be month to month. And that's all we're going to have in terms of the general admi and administrative. So that's where we're at at this point, and we will move on forward to uh, cash uh, and calculating cash and then the cash budget next time.